Hey over there, Joe Lunchbox. And Joy Nightingale. And today we have landed right here in Cove Neck on Long Island, New York. Mm -hmm. And you might be saying, what's that big building standing behind you? It's a beautiful house. It is. In fact, it's a very important house because it was the home of our 26th president, Theodore Roosevelt. Now, he lived here from 1885 till his passing in 1919. And we decided we're going to walk around, talk about Theodore Roosevelt, his life, his legacy, while showing some of this, these grounds of this house. Mm -hmm. We can't actually film in the house, but we're going to show you around. Yes. And it's worth seeing. And he is my favorite president, uh, being in the Boy Scouts when I was younger. Uh, conservation ship and like the parks departments, all that stuff is important to me. And he was the first person that realized we should conserve some of our land, started setting land aside. We'll discuss all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But we're going to walk around and discuss this and uh, have a good time. And uh, go explore and learn about some American history. And if you like this kind of stuff, you should let us know that you like this. Because this is different than most for subject matter. But yep. I've wanted to go. We only had 40-something presidents to see all their houses that we're able to. Or our national libraries and stuff along those lines. I like American history. So if you like that kind of stuff, let us know by liking this video. So we should do more of that. Yep. And also subscribe to our channel. Because we do do some stuff like this. A lot of more roadside stuff. A lot of Americana. That's what we do. So you should subscribe. Yes. And also, let us know which other presidents' houses you'd like to see and stuff like that. Libraries, any historic thing, inauguration sites, you know, that kind of stuff. All right, but we can get this video started, so step right up. Let's go for this ride. Top Sagamore Hill. The house on the hill was grand, but not opulent. It had fewer rooms and less depth than other mansions and didn't have a manicured lawn. Sagamore Hill particularly on the inside was a reflection of Theodore Roosevelt as a traveler, explorer, naturalist, hunter, and most importantly, family man. He let the architect Lamb and Rich design the outside in the Queen Anne style popular at the time, but he had definite ideas about what the inside needed. And we do have some of the pictures of what the inside of the house looked like. North room built in 1905, drawing room in 1904. Have Theodore Roosevelt working in the library in June of 1905. And in 1905, he actually would have been the president of the United States right there, you see. He became president in September of 1901 after McKinley was assassinated. So the way President Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, became our president is, we'll get into his earlier years, but from 1898, to 1900 he was actually the governor of New York but then he ran under McKinley to be the vice president McKinley won elected president 1901 but not that long after in September of 1901 McKinley was assassinated and Theodore Roosevelt was sworn in he finished out that term was re-elected and finished out his presidency to 1909 so that photo he was president because Sagamore Hill was actually his summer White House he would come up here in the summers. I think it's cool. We're standing at what once was the summer White House for a president. Second floor, how it just juts out. No floor underneath it, but you see how the support beams are just suspending it. First, we have the ice house. Now, they had to keep stuff cool back in the day, so when Lamb and Rich Design built the main house, they also built this ice house to store food in. The staff kept it replenished with ice stored in the ice house in, in front of you. Its deeper cellar and thick brick walls for insulation and pitched roof for ventilation kept locally harvested ice frozen well into the summer months. We have a photo of Quinton Roosevelt, Roosevelt's son, sitting atop the ice house. And this photo was taken by his sister Ethel in 1905. I have a front, front view of that ice house. It is crazy to think this building was so deep that ice could be stored here all the way through June. We have a good photo of Roosevelt with his family at home. Now, family was very important for him. And you have to remember, like, obviously this is a big house. Roosevelt isn't like someone like Lincoln that came from poor starts. He didn't grow up in a log cabin. Roosevelt was born into a wealthy family in New York City. So Roosevelt was actually born on October 27th, 1858. Like I said, he was to a wealthy family and that didn't mean he had a great childhood. He actually had very poor health, stuff like asthma as a young kid. 
and fought and struggled for that. And I was saying how family must have been important because on February 14th, 1884, Roosevelt was at work in the city and he finds out his mother, Mitty, has passed away due to typhoid fever. It's crazy, within a few hours, his wife, Alice, also passed away on the same day to Bright's disease, which was a kidney alignment disease. Now, he was devastated. He just had to get away. He moved to the Dakotas. He worked on the ranch there from 84 to the end of 85 until uh, he had prized cattle and there was a blizzard and killed everything and he nah, packed up and moved back from the Dakota territories. But I couldn't fathom, like, yeah, it doesn't matter you grew up wealthy. To, to lose your, your first wife and also your mother on the same day must have been so devastating. On the back of this house, we have this really pretty gold eagle, sort of at the peak of this, almost at the roof. Looking off the back of his house, it was some nice view here on the North Shore of Long Island. Now, the reason I personally love Theodore Roosevelt was he did do great things for our country, I feel. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking about in his presidency. Early on, during the Spanish-American War, he was first in the Navy, then he switched to the Army. He was a lieutenant colonel, and he led the Rough Riders on the Battle of San Juan, and he became like a national hero already. And the thing from that, to become governor of New York, vice president, president, and he was, he was a tough guy too, and I, I, I respect that. <laughs> uh, he was president from, like I said, 1901 to 1909, but in 1912, he wanted to run again for president. It was before Franklin D. Roosevelt that they said afterwards, you can't do more than two terms. So Roosevelt wanted to serve another term, and he didn't, he wasn't voted in for the first term, so there's a lot of things. So he ran for the Republican Party ticket. He didn't get it, so he's like, I'm gonna start my own party. He started the Progressive Party, and the problem was that it sort of split the Republican vote. Half voted for him, half voted for the other candidate, and Woodrow Wilson won on the Democratic ticket because the Republicans' votes were split in half. <laughs> but the reason I'm saying he was tough, while on that campaign trail for that 1912 election, Roosevelt was actually in Milwaukee at Hotel Gilpatrick, and a man named John Schrank came up to him. Roosevelt just finished having lunch inside. He went outside. Man came up to him, shot him point blank in the chest. Oof. This isn't a joke. And it didn't kill Roosevelt. It went through his eyeglass case, some manuscripts in his pocket, but it did shoot him. He was bleeding. But he was so tough that he went, he gave his hour-long speech. <laughs> well, imagine, then. imagine when he pulls out the manuscript to give his speech <laughs> and, <the whole. laughs> and his blood on everything. Finished his speech, then he went to the hospital to take care of. Like, that's some, that's some uh, tough Cuffles. toughness to you, yeah. And uh, obviously, like I said, from being Boy Scouts, the Nassau County Council, which I was a Boy Scout with, switched his name to the Theodore Roosevelt Council. We're in Nassau County. I'm from Nassau County. This house is in Nassau County. It's stuff I love mm -hmm. learning about. When I was a kid, we'd come here. School trips. And, and like learning that he was a hunter, and then he changed his whole mind on that and got into conservation. Started being the people that put land to the side for stuff like that and, and like other stuff in his presidency like the railroad started really like monopolizing and he built antitrust laws he was the one that started the panama canal for help with with trade he even mediated the end of the russo-japanese war which he actually got the nobel peace prize from so during his presidency he did a, a lot of things sounds like a lot and like as a man that loves the outdoors, seeing that he was one of the first presidents that understood the importance of it, growing up, he was always important to me. Like I said, Boy Scouts, he's an important figure in Boy Scouts. And that's why I like him. And I like to share <laughs> stories about him. And I hope you like hearing the stories about him. Let's go walk around the house, property more. Yep. Edith with young neighbor boy in front of the arbor in 1902. And then we have her also standing in the nest circa 1904. It says six Roosevelt children and nearly a dozen neighbors could be a rambunctious group. Sometimes Edith Roosevelt needed a place for solitude. The arbor was not too far from the house. And there we have that arbor. And yep, pretty close to the house. Valued family friends. We're actually at 
their pet cemetery, while most families have a pet or two, Roosevelt's nearly had a zoo. The death of a pet meant a funeral that included a procession, flowers, and even eulogies. Jack, a Manchester Terrier, and the family's favorite dog was buried twice. And we actually have their pet cemetery here. It's fading now, but you can see some of the names. Susan and Jesse, little boys, one named Cuba, some named Tamara. Little Texas. Little Texas. I do think, like I was saying, how he became into conservation and started learning and appreciating those animals. You wonder what the significant moment that changed his mind was. If you looked inside the house, there was a lot of hunting that happened inside at one point. Well, not, they didn't hunt inside, but there's a lot of taxidermy inside showing all the hunting. And I wonder what changed it. I, we did once tell the story of how while in Mississippi, they uh, got him a bear to shoot and he refused saying it was unsportsmanlike. And that's why we actually have the modern day teddy bear. We went to a teddy bear museum where we tell that story. We'll put a link to that down below. And you wonder if stuff like that what made him change his mind on hunting and get into humanitarian, like the conservation stuff. And I love like one of those ones was Little Texas. We have Colonel Theodore Roosevelt riding Little Texas after returning from Cuba in 1898. Imagine buried right here is his horse that he rode at the Battle of San Juan with the Rough Riders. And it's buried here. The original Jack on the rustic chair. Door that was so loved it got buried twice. The White House and here in Sagamore Hill. In 1948, after Mrs. Roosevelt died, Sagamore Hill, its contents, and 83 acres of land were bought by the Theodore Roosevelt Association, a nonprofit corpor corporation founded in 1919 for recalling to the American people Mr. Roosevelt's personality and achievements. And then in 63, the association presented the house and property at Sagamore Hill, the house in which Roosevelt was born in New York City, and a 500,000 endowment to the American people as a gift. And that's why we're able to stand here right now. A good view. I like the painting version, sort of like a house. We see where the house is, the ice house that we're looking. We walk down to the arbor, so the pet cemetery. The windmill's right behind us. Beautiful piece of property, going right near the water. So Roosevelt had planned to name the house and property Lee Home to honor his first wife, Alice Lee, but he began seeing Edith Kermit Caro, a childhood playmate, and decided to call the estate Sagamore Hill from the old Sagamore Mahanis, who as chief of his little tribe, signed away his rights to the land. And that was the woman that Roosevelt ended up marrying in December of 1886. And it must have been a real lively house. Just think we talked about all the animals, all the kids. In fact, three of Roosevelt's kids were actually born here, Theodore Jr., Kermit and Ethel were actually born here in Sagamore Hill. But it wasn't only good things that happened here in Sagamore Hill. It would have been January 6, 1919, around 4 to 4.15 in the morning. President Roosevelt had a blood cut that separated where it was connected, went into his lung and killed him. So he actually passed away right here in his own house as well. Roosevelt said to his wife as he was lying ill on January 5th, 1919, I wonder if you will ever know how I love Sagamore Hill. And he was only 60 years old when he passed away. And it's crazy, when we walked in, there's a tent set up and there's some sort of event happening. And what mm -hmm. the event is actually, is sort of a Roosevelt family reunion. We're looking around and everyone has name tags that says Roosevelt family member. And I think it's crazy that the family, all these years later, is still coming back to the house. He passed away in this house 103 years ago, are coming back, celebrating their legacy yeah. and their family here at the house. We have the windmill. The mills pump fresh water from a well and sent the water to storage tanks and a hot water heater in the house. Me and Joy do a lot of property tours, house tours. Sagamore Hill, even though we can't sadly bring photos or videos in the house itself, is one of my favorites. 
uh, just the way the stairs go, the little bedrooms are. To me, it feels like if I was to live in any of the houses we ever do tours in, this is the one I'd want to live in. I just always love the look of it, being built on a hill on the North Shore, the taxidermy in it. It's, it's definitely what I love. To help feed the family, we have the, the cow pen was to the left of the building, we have a farm shed and a chicken house. Dinner often featured fried chicken covered with white gravy, pork, and vegetables. Roosevelt and his wife Edith didn't expect the farm to be self-sufficient, but they did their best to raise much of the meat and vegetables the family ate. The farm workers took care of the animals and the Roosevelt children spent many hours playing in the barnyard. And we have a photo of Quinton Roosevelt feeding the rabbits in June of 1904. Inside one of the farm storage buildings. Some good photos of like hired hands in front of the newborn in 1907. I like this one of the pile of hay and we actually have Theodore Roosevelt out there working with the farm hands. It must have been interesting growing up in a spot like this. Like we were saying before how the animals were very important. Two dogs riding a little pony there. We see Theodore Roosevelt, his wife Ethel, and standing in the back, that's his daughter Alice. I told you how his first wife passed away. They actually had Alice, I think it was like a week or two, before the wife passed away. Ooh, the chicken house. Henrietta! Is that you? <laughs> Including Road Island Red and White Leghorn. Do you know Foghorn Leghorn? You got some eggs right there. We have a map of Sagamore Hill here. And you can see we are here. We just near the pond garage. It is cool because the museum is at the old orchard visitor center. And you could go to his house. A good photo of Quinton Roosevelt using a style which allowed easy passage over fences uh, circa 1905. The one in front of us was a reconstruction of this one. So here we have the photo. And right here we have the reconstruction. We're heading to the Museum Nature Trail. Like I said, we can't film really inside, but if you did come, over here we have the Museum Nature Trail. All the way at the other end over there is where the house is. And there is a lot, and I mean a lot to do here. I would recommend anyone, if you are on Long Island, into American history, come check out Sagamore Hill. Because it's an awesome house. The tours are incredible. I love any of the national park stuff. People are always so knowledgeable of what they're teaching you, showing you. We walk down to show you the other building at the other end of the property. This is the museum at the Old Orchard and also a visitor center. It is rather difficult to explain, except on the theory that all outer life appeals to me. Then there is the rhythmic motion, the sound of an ax eating into the heart of a tree, the flying splinters, the feeling of satisfaction that comes from bringing every muscle into play, the invigorating smell of the wood, and crash as the tree toppling over. Here we have Theodore Roosevelt chopping firewood in 1910. And there actually is a nature trail that goes to a boardwalk over Eel Creek to Cold Spring Harbor. Right here, so you can even do some hiking here. Billy, we're open again, Thursday to Sunday, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. free. That's the information in the museum. And that building behind us, the old orchard house, was actually built in 1938 for Theodore Roosevelt Jr. and his wife, Eleanor, to live in. Now I have a funny story though, because inside that building now is the gift shop. Now the gift shop wasn't always there, it used to be down the way. When I was in third grade, I came here for a class trip. My mom was the class mother. There was another mother also on the trip. But we went to the gift shop, and my mom always collects kitchen tchotchkes, little plates, novelty, stuff like that. And there was a little shot glass with gold leafing. And I did not know what a shot glass was. My mother rarely drank. But it was a cute little glass. I knew she liked cute little dishes and stuff like that. 
So I got that shot glass for my mom as a souvenir. And I'm telling my mom loves these things. My mom loves these things. <laughs> and all the other mothers thought my mom was an alcoholic because I was buying my mom a shot glass. Yet all I thought was it was a cute little souvenir dish thing that's at Sagamore Hill. <laughs> you, you make mistakes when you're a kid. You learn. You grow up and you learn. Now we saw Theodore Roosevelt's house. We're actually going to drive down the road because... The house is built on a hill, but we leave through the town of Kovnak, and we actually get to Young's Memorial Cemetery at the end of this road, and that's actually where Theodore Roosevelt's final resting spot is. So we're going to go pay respects to the 26th president of the United States at his grave next. Theodore Roosevelt, 1858 to 1919. New York governor from 1898 to 1900. President of the United States, 1901 to 1909, buried here. We just came from his house, Sagamore Hill, down this road from the town of Kovnek to now making our way in Young's Memorial Cemetery. Entrance free, main path, Dangerous. Proceed at own risk. Young's Memorial Cemetery, first set aside as a burial ground in 1658, incorporated March 26, 1900. The funeral of Theodore Roosevelt, January 8, 1919. From this spot, the cordage proceeded up the steps on your left to his final resting place on the hill overlooking the bay. In the long fight for righteousness, the watchword for all of us is spend and be spent. Theodore Roosevelt. Now making our way up the stairs. <laughs> Theodore Roosevelt said, keep your eyes on the stars and keep your feet on the ground. Joy says, Joe, you always keep your eyes on the star and never keep your feet on the ground. It kind of is true. <laughs> and right here we have the final resting spot of Theodore Roosevelt. We have a plaque in front, Theodore Roosevelt, Medal of Honor, Lieutenant Colonel, U.S. Army, Spanish-American War. And has his life and his death date. Also here is his second wife. We have the presidential eagle shield dawning the top of the headstone. Now, like I said, Theodore Roosevelt, important to me. Before I said about the Boy Scouts, now we talked about his presidency up to 1909. We talked how he did try to run after that, but in 1910, the very significant thing happened in this world. The Boy Scouts of America were founded. And he saw the importance of the Boy Scouts of America. In fact, they made him the vice president of the Boy Scouts of America, unofficial, but a local troop here on the Northern Shore in Nassau County. He actually was a troop committee member and was active in the Scouts. And for me, that's always been important. We always talk with the quotes of Theodore Roosevelt, like speak softly, carry a big stick, and always yell bully. All those things tie into Theodore Roosevelt and it's been influential to me my whole entire life. I wanna read a quote that Theodore Roosevelt said about the Boy Scouts of America. More and more, I have grown to believe in the Boy Scout movement. I regard it as one of the movements most full of promise for the future here in America. The Boy Scout movement is distinctly an asset to our country for the development of efficiency, virility, and good citizenship. It is essential that its leaders be men of strong, wholesome character, of unmistakable devotion to our country, its customs and ideals, as well as in soul and by law citizens thereof, whose wholehearted loyalty is given to this nation and to this nation alone. It's a quote about him talking about Boy Scouts of America. Just want to pay respects and have a 
moment of silence for President Theodore Roosevelt. So there you have it, folks. Mm -hmm. A little history about Theodore Roosevelt. We saw his house in Sagamore Hill. We came to visit his grave. Yes. Was our 26th president of the United States. He might have came in because there was an assassination on the president before him, but he did get elected using the political system for a second term. One of my favorite presidents. I'm glad we got to share his history with you and his home here on Long Island. So I think we could call it. I think so. Sagamore Hill and the grave of Theodore Roosevelt. Been there, done that. Remember folks, safe travels. Good eats. And live life.